Hello, hello. Here's a programming lesson on high frequency leg focus full body training. So that's what the big long crazy name there is. So the goal of this program is to increase leg size to match upper body development without hindering the upper body development in the most important needed areas. So this is for somebody who's kind of top heavy or they want to bring up their legs before like um, an aesthetic competition. So we have uh, sometimes men will transfer over from men's physique to classic physique where they compete in one division with board shorts on, the next division they have to have kind of more like trunks where you can see their legs and their legs are judged. And this is also for anybody, anybody wanting to kind of bring up their lower body um, to match upper body development. So the focus of this uh, is, like we said, to increase leg size, but we don't want to lo lose development in the upper body. So too often people will try to bring up their legs and they kind of forget about their upper body in total. So this is an example of how to still keep the upper body prior prioritized while bringing up the legs. So part of understanding the rest of this crap that I'm going to roll through here is to understand how to use the program, you would need to rank your upper body parts from most important to least important. So there's just kind of common. We have to group them in uh, general terms. So for back, we're not going to group them as traps, rhomboids, lats, you know, anything like that. Um, like, uh, you know, for shoulders, we're not going to group them separately as front, middle, and rear delt. They'll start to get too complicated. So you're just going to, anytime you train shoulders, whatever you qualify shoulders as. If you include that as front, middle, and rear delts, or if you like doing rear delt as part of your back training, totally fine. So you just need to kind of think about where you're gonna, how you're going to rank the importance of the different upper body parts. So if your back is super important, you'd rank it number one. If your chest is super important, you want to rank it number one. If there's something like maybe your triceps aren't a big deal, like you want them to grow, but they're not like lagging behind. Or maybe your biceps are they're a good enough size. So it's okay if they take a little bit of a back seat while you're trying to bring up your legs. You would rank these lower at number four, four or five. So that's how you're going to rank them. So rank the most important to least important. I just put them there as uh, alphabetical order. Now, our sample routine splits we have is um, if you're training... Whoo, hold on a second there. I'm going crazy with the mouse. So um, if you train five days a week, you do your core work or core abdominal work uh, with heavy leg day. You do uh, on day one. Day two is upper body the highest priority with a third priority, you take a day off. Then you come back and do legs, uh, abs again with a high volume leg day. And we're going to be discussing here in a second um, what those entail. And then the next day you come in, day five is upper body part number two, four, and five. You do core bracing, lower, uh, le a bodybuilding leg day, and then a day off. So you're doing legs three times a week with this program to make sure they grow. And part of the reason why is by changing the intensity of the focus of each day from a heavy leg day to a high volume day to a traditional bodybuilding day, you're going to make sure that at all times the legs have some damage and are working to repair themselves. There's enough time in between the different types of workouts that you're having an appropriate rest period to get the muscles to repair themselves and grow, but you're not waiting too long. So, for example, after a heavy leg day, you're going to have a lot of muscle damage, but plus also joint stress, joint damage. So that's where we have our extra day off in between. So if you notice from, like, the high volume to the bodybuilding day, there's only one day in between. From the bodybuilding day back to the leg day, heavy leg day, there's only one day in between. That's going to give those uh, joints between those workouts 48 hours to heal. Since this is a heavier, more stressful day on the joints, you have 72 hours. Now... From this one is you're going to be coming into this leg day still kind of like sore and nervous system fatigued from the heavy leg day. So that's why it's high volume. And we go down through here and that equates to like isolation work and compound movements of 40 to 60 to second time under tensions. So you think about how heavy can you do a leg extension if you have to make it last 40 to 60 seconds. It can't be that heavy. So your high volume day is lower weight wise, so it doesn't stress the joints. It's actually still almost like a full recovery day for the joints still. So you're going to get in there and beat up the muscles some, but that increased blood flow from that long of time under tension will actually help heal the joints even more. Then you have an additional day off, then you're back at your bodybuilding day, which is, you know, kind of normal roughness on the joints, but now they're fully recovered and ready to go. So by doing legs three days a week, if you improperly uh, place your days in or the intensities in 
Like if you try to blend them too much rather than having significant days apart, you're going to collect joint stress over the course of your program. And maybe by weeks four, five, or six, you start having knee pain. By seven, eight, nine, all of a sudden your IT band is hurting like hell. You can't squat. You can't do this. You can't do that. And all of a sudden you start having limitations. So by varying your intensities and by having them properly spaced apart, you will avoid a majority of that stuff. Now, our upper body is involved by having the rankings in there. So you can see your upper body gets trained twice a week. Well, if you're only going to train five days a week and we need three days to make the legs grow, well, then you're only going to have two days to train your upper body. Now, if you can if you can fit in six training days, all of a sudden we allow an extra day to train that upper body in there. So we still have our three days for lower body, correctly spaced for the intensities. And then you have um, different ways of pairing the upper body parts. So you'll have upper body importance number one paired with number five. Then number here and day three, we have two, three, and four all grouped together. So you can train one and two again. So that way you can get the most important things trained twice in a week. Okay? So this is really good for continuing to maximally grow your weakest upper body parts while still prioritizing your legs. Now I have done training programs for clients at seven days a week where we'll do seven days a week for three weeks and on the fourth week they'll only train three days that week. And that's how we kind of vary in the recovery needed for joints and also CNS and just general fatigue mental fatigue and stress. So down here on the leg day descriptions, your heavy leg day, you have some kind of movement prep to make sure your body's ready and prepared to go. You do a low damage warm up for legs. So it's more so just blood flow. You're not really trying to damage the muscle tissue. You pick a squat variation exercise with time under tensions of 20 to 30 seconds. Then you do a hinge variation, which is like a hip based bend for 20 to 30 second time or tensions. Those are your heavy sets. Now the number of sets and stuff like that vary per person, so I couldn't include that in this handout. This is just to give you the idea of how to structure stuff. Then you have a low damage, high blood flow for restoration. So these are going to be very straining on the joints. They're going to cause certain muscles to tighten up. So if you do a high blood flow, low damage movements at the end. And these would be like a leg extension for a set of 50. So you just throw on moderate weight, really lightweight actually, and just do crank out 50 reps. That helps to release uh, some of the tight muscles around any kind of, like your knees for example. You can do this with leg press, hack squat, you can do it for adductor, abductor, wherever you feel like you have tightnesses. And again, that would vary depending on the person. So whoever I wrote this program for, I would have exercise specifics all kind of geared towards their needs. Then their high volume day, we have that movement prep again, make sure you're ready to move. You have isolation work, which is like quad only, hamstring only, glute only, you know, adductor, abductor, where you're isolating out muscles from each other for 40 to second, uh, 40 to 60 second time or tensions. Then we have compound movements for 40 to 60 second time or tensions. Then you have a traditional body moon day, movement prep. You do compound movements before your isolations now, so you can go a little bit heavier and do 30 to 40 second time or tensions. You have isolations for 30 to 40, and then you have your low damage high blood flow to release any tight muscles. So this whole program, it gives you how to structure your three days, it gives you a sample of a five or six day training split. And then also it kind of gives you like the base of what the whole point of all this stuff is. So this is just a cool little lesson on how to program legs more frequency without losing upper body focus. Pretty cool. So if anybody wants this handout, you can just kind of use that and gear it towards your own training. You can just contact us at BrutalIronGym at gmail.com. Just thought it would be fun to share kind of the thinking behind how to organize uh, bodybuilding training or aesthetic-based training, depending on whatever your focus or needs are.